Hello, I'm Alex Davies, founder of Wealth Club. Today I'm with Tom Phillips, Investment Director at Downing, to talk about the Downing One VCT. Tom, could you start off by giving some background to yourself and um, Downing? Of course. So Downing is a UK fund management business. We've been around since 1986. With over 140 members of staff, we manage over a billion pounds worth of assets. The nature of the capital that we raise and manage is typically tax retail money, venture capital trusts, enterprise investment scheme and inheritance tax scheme money that is deployed across a range of different sectors, from things like hotels through to energy parks, solar farms and wind turbines, moving on to ventures and early stage technology companies through to residential property development lending and listed companies at the smaller end of the market. From my point of view, I've been at Downing for coming up to nine years. Um, the bulk of my time is, here has been spent very much on the investment side, um, although more recently I'm getting a little bit more involved on the fundraising and distribution aspects. Um, prior to Downing, I was at Lloyds Bank. Um, I was there for five years, joined initially on the graduate scheme, moved into corporate credit, and then spent a couple of years during the credit crunch working in restructuring. Tell me about um, Downing One VCT. What does it aim to do? What type of company? What is it? So Downing One's a fascinating VCT. If, um, if if only because I spent the last few weeks helping with the fund launch. I know a little bit about the potted history. Um, originally, the fund um, came from a, a Downing Protected Healthcare VCT back in 1996. Um, and in the last 23 years, an amalgamation of different VCTs has taken place. And I think we've got up to 18 or 19 in total. Um, in 2013, at that point, the amalgamated A17, 18, 19, um, were down to six. And we merged those six in 2013 to create Downing One. Um, Downing One as at today, or rather as at March earlier this year when the year end was um, was drawn in, uh, has about £104 million worth of net assets covering over 90 different portfolio companies. So it's a hybrid VCT. And the aim for the investors in that is to benefit from a steady dividend yield um, where the underlying risk to capital is helped to be um, offset by significant diversification against the portfolio of assets um, that, as I say, have been built up for over 20 years. And you've got a few different strategies. What are you've got? Aim. You've got unquoted. Do you want to talk about that a bit? So one of the nice things about Downing One is, is its longevity, as I said, and fundamentally the the strategy, as far as the investment approach is concerned, is built on three aspects: asset backed, listed, and ventures. Now, just taking those in turn and giving a little bit of colour to each of those, asset backed makes up about 48% of the overall portfolio. And those are businesses typically with some kind of freehold property to them, or at least decent visibility on long term revenue streams. So for us, we mean things like hotels, care homes, children's nursery. In fact, one of the original deals that Downing won in its previous guys did in the late 90s was into a business called Downing Care. Um, you might have guessed from the name that we're not hugely original with the, some of the choice of funds and some of, the, some of that history with our VCT investee companies as well. So Downing Care is a, a very long-standing um, care business focused on learning disability and physical disability care um, for, for adults um, based out in Surrey and Hampshire. So asset-backed businesses typically where there's some form of freehold property with steady growth and an opportunity for, for us to benefit from that. Listed. Um, the listed size of the portfolio um, comes to about 33%. And for us, when we talk about listed, it's small and micro cap. So really trying to bring a private equity discipline to the analysis of businesses at that end of the market. And by that end of the market, I typically mean about 150 million pounds or less of market capitalization. Mm. At that end of the market, there's limited financial coverage from the analyst population. And so what that often means is that a, a company's reports get released and there's a page produced once a year on those reports. There's not anywhere near the same level of interrogation that you'd expect to see at the FTSE 100 level. What we try to do, therefore, is come in and, and really see where the, the arbitrage opportunities are. So bringing that private equity discipline around investigation of a business's financial performance, its future outlook, the quality of its management team, to see where the market perception around value actually differs from the underlying reality. So we've built up a, a long-standing aim portfolio um, where businesses have those kinds of characteristics and where through our intervention and our proactive management of those stakes, we can hopefully help drive future value for shareholders. The final area of the three is ventures, and clearly that's where VCTs and ES these days are very much focusing, following the changes in the post patient capital review world. Ventures for us, um, different people have different descriptions of early stage, but ventures for us are businesses typically where there is um, genuine traction, and so some form of revenues for VCTs, typically we're looking for about a million pounds worth of annualised revenue, um, but strong growth prospects, often with some kind of technology angle to it, which gives that scalability, which you don't necessarily see on a global application level from more traditional asset-backed businesses like a pub. Um, 
the target for those types of ventures companies is really to be able to deliver higher returns to reflect the higher risk that you're taking given the lack of asset backing. So Downing One as an overall has, a, has a, an interesting hybrid strategy in comparison to a number of other VCTs that are on the market. So what's the future? Obviously asset backed are out for future investment, but what would you say the proportion? Is it an AIM VCT or is it going to be ventures or is that 50-50? It's a really good question and actually we've been, we've been thinking a lot about this as we've been pulling together the marketing collateral for the VCT launch over the last month or two. And the reality is that all new capital that's going into to, to the market from the VCT that we raise and um, will very much be focused on venture style businesses. And there may well be one or two AIM listed deals that we do in a year. Although our experience of companies that are floating on AIM or listing on AIM and looking to raise further capital is that where they qualify for VCT money, they tend to have a, an exorbitant valuation because so many people are after those kinds of stocks. So there may be the odd one where we have a particular opportunity to take advantage of, but I don't think we're expecting a significant amount. As such, the focus for the new capital will be very much around ventures businesses. But as I said, if you look at the overall blend of the portfolio and, and just frankly the level of existing asset backed and listed stocks and positions that we have within it, this is not a VCT that's going to become a ventures VCT overnight. Our expectation is that a number of those businesses are going to be here for, for a meaningful amount of time and therefore over the medium term, whilst ventures absolutely will increase as a proportion of the overall portfolio, there will still be a healthy blend across all three areas. And how's the VCT doing? currently? So they're doing well I think. So what we've seen um, since the merger in 2013 is that the total return per share, which for us is effectively the net assets plus any dividends that we've paid out since 2013, has grown to uh, £1.10. Um, there, were, there were a couple of issues back in 2018 with a few portfolio companies. Um, that happens. The nature of these businesses and, and VCTs generally is that you are going into companies that don't always work out to plan. Um, but having said that, what that helps to underline, at least in our mind, is that having a diversified portfolio is absolutely the right way to play this kind of investing. Because if you're going into a VCT with a very limited pool of stocks and you have material movements in any given of those, particularly if they're adverse, then that can have quite a, a significant impact on investors. So whilst there were issues historically, actually we've seen those being limited to a handful within the portfolio. Overall, the, the position is, is sort of now um, stabilised on those companies and the VCT is now trending upwards again and, and our outlook is very positive. Um, do you want to talk about some of the recent investments you've made? Yeah, of course. Let me give you a, a couple of examples. So HackerJob is a, an interesting business on the venture side. And HackerJob is a business, um, effectively a, a recruitment platform, a recruitment tool for software engineers. Um, and as the name suggests, this is IT related software engineers where they are being given challenges and um, effectively hacks as they like to call them, um, where they can demonstrate their coding skills. And that as a, uh, as a particular service is very interesting to the likes of Apple and Barclays who use that as a way to hire their real technology talent for their companies in a way that goes beyond the traditional interview interviewee process where I ask you a question and you have to try and persuade me that you know what you're talking about with coding or something as binary as that, if you excuse the pun. And it's very clear whether you can or can't do it. So what the hacker job tool does is um, effectively give candidates for a particular role an opportunity to demonstrate their skills. Um, and then from the outputs of that, they will be ranked which allows the recruiter to then have a, a sort of a clear view on exactly what they're hiring. Um, we've been invested in the business um, originally going back to 2015, I believe, and um, with our EIS, fund, uh, EIS venture funds, um, our VCT funds, and then participate in a, in a larger round um, that was led by AXA Ventures. So there were a few things that we liked about it. A disruptive technology, a really strong management team who are very close to that particular niche industry, um, a strong syndicate, as I mentioned with AXA, um, the nature of these venture businesses that often they do take a bit longer and can take a bit more money to get to where you need to get to. So having a few sensible and frankly fairly deep pocketed investors around the table rather than it all being on down in one shoulders, for example, is quite helpful. So a second example of a deal that we've done more recently is to a business called Zoops. Zoops is a, a luxury goods reseller. Um, that is mainly e-commerce based, albeit it has uh, in recent times also opened some physical stores as well. And um, this is buying and selling secondhand Rolexes and luxury handbags. Um, as a business, um, we've been invested with them for a couple of years now and did do a further investment um, into the company earlier this year. And actually follow investments are quite a theme within Downing One. We do like to get to know companies often with a smaller stake from either existing VCT or ES funds and then getting to know the management, understanding the real dynamics of the business before making those commitments to the larger checks. Um, Zoops absolutely embodies all of that. So they've grown their turnover quite significantly since we've joined. We've helped support the development of the board, um, notably including the appointment of a, a financial director more recently. It's made a tangible difference to the quality of that organisation. 
as a further example of what we have within the portfolio, um, moving perhaps towards the asset backside away from ventures, is a business called Pilgrim Trading. Um, Pilgrim is actually a deal that I did myself a few years ago now, um, funding the development of two children's nurseries in southwest London. And what we really liked about that opportunity were probably two or three key things. Um, the first was the, the asset backing, so two properties within South East London, um, purpose-built nurseries where you are getting real bricks and mortar, and um, itself quite a scarce asset when you have the D1 planning use on it, um, that will always give a, an underpinning to the capital that we're investing. And um, the second was the quality of the management team, backing an experienced chief exec who've got a significant amount of experience, you know, decades in the sector, and um, give that quality and that confidence that this was going to be a business that was going to succeed. Um, and then the third thing was, I suppose, balancing the, the local supply and demand characteristics. So Twickenham and Brentford, where the two nurseries are based, and there is a strong demand for ch childcare. You've got parents who've got good jobs, often working up in town, and who need to have access to a high quality of childcare. And so being able to go into those markets with settings that have a, just a fantastic learning environment, both from the, the way the, the, the nurseries are designed and through to the quality of the education and care that's being provided by the staff, really helps give those, give those parents what they're looking for. So we've put the capital in, and backing, a, as I say, a high quality management team where we're able to provide a service that that demand is, is seeking. Um, and it's been a, you know, a strong performing asset within the portfolio. And what do you think sort of the returns will be like from the VCT going forwards because of all these new venture investments? Um, so it's an interesting question. And I think if you're looking at Downing One as a whole, it's very much got a strategy focused on delivering a target 4% yield. So effectively a 5.7% by the time you include the tax breaks that go with that. And I think the nature of the, the ventures investing are absolutely that they're much more volatile. Um, and I'd be surprised if any VCT manager said differently. Um, you will have a portfolio approach and you would expect a proportion not to succeed. But equally, you'd expect a proportion to do very well and effectively provide an overall return to the fund that is, that is attractive. Nevertheless, what you're getting with the, the down in one portfolio, because you've got this hybrid blend of existing and legacy investments, and over 50% of the investments have been in the, in the portfolio for over five years, and is effectively a bit of a smoothing of that volatility. So whilst on any given year, you may have some winners and losers in the ventures aspect of the portfolio, one would expect to see sort of decent steady generation and growth in capital value and dividends from the, from the other core assets. And of course, historically, you were very much on the asset backed side. What changes have you made um, to the team, etc., to um, to be qualified to do venture investing? Yeah, so it's a good question. And actually, from when I joined Downing back in the beginning of 2011 to where we are today, the business has, has transformed. And so back then, we probably had 20 or 25 people in the company, much smaller manager, and probably about 200 million under management versus these days, as I said earlier over 140 members of staff and over a billion. And things like venture investing have been a key part of that growth. So whilst it has always been something that we've done, and actually back in 2013, I was involved into a, a SaaS business venture investment that we made with one of our AES funds. What we've seen over the last few years, and um, three years particularly since the post a patient capital review um, is a growth in our ventures team, we've taken that up to 12 people. We've developed a network of venture partners, so effectively entrepreneurs and industry specialists who bring both a network, bring deal flow, help with some of our due diligence, potentially can co invest to really try and establish that. Um, that, that new offering with, that Downing has, building on the legacy of what we've always been doing. How involved are you in these businesses? We try, to, we try to avoid being frustrated chief executives. Um, I think there's a danger and, and sometimes a temptation for an investment manager or individuals within an investment management firm to try and turn up at a board meeting and tell a chief exec who might have decades of experience how to do their job. And the best way I've had it explained to me is that when we make an investment, a management team are responsible for the day-to-day -day executive operations of that company. They are there to run the business. My job as an investment director is to hold the board to account for the investment plan that we've put in place. So when I think about how involved we get, I suppose we try and temper it with the relative size of the state, whether we're in part of a larger round um, alongside co-investments, um, and really the stage of the business and the quality of that management team. So typically we'd expect to be taking director rights and or observer rights. Um, we will be absolutely expecting to be speaking to the management team on a regular basis, attending monthly board meetings, seeing those monthly board packs. But rather than simply being somebody that the management team feel they have to report to, we want to be a partner with them. You know, there's, there's an awful lot of money um, in the City of London and beyond that's looking for good homes. 
and management teams are in a position where they can demand more. So from our point of view, being able to offer things like access to our network, access to you know, sharing of best practice between other chief execs, um, simple things like access to uh, recruitment tools where effectively Downing plays a subscription to give them access to a wider portfolio of non-execs. All those kinds of things are ways that we try and help do a little bit more for the investy businesses that we work with. I want to invest in a VCT this year. Why should I invest with um, Downing One? Um, I'd say there's probably three reasons. Um, one is the diversification point. Um, I think what you're getting with Downing One is effectively access to a, a broad range of different businesses with limited correlation to the wider UK PLC. Um, that more than that, simply by the fact that they've been around for so long and are generating income, also helps support the dividend. And that's probably the second point. If you compare, um, if you compare Downing One in comparison to other VCTs, there are businesses and VCTs that are out there that are just not in a position yet to do that. So a dividend yield, often coming from companies that other VCTs can no longer act, invest in in the way that we wouldn't be able to with new capital is quite important. And then the third reason I would point to is Downing itself. You're getting access um, to a, a, a VCT that's managed by an established manager that's been around for a long time, that's invested in itself significantly in growing its team and growing its systems, and really working very hard to make sure we're doing the best job we possibly can for our investors. So it's a hybrid VCT that aims to give a, a strong dividend yield um, to investors, balancing that, that portfolio diversification, hopefully to give everybody the, the expectation and the results that they're looking for. Um, Tom Phillips of Downing, thank you very much. Thank you, Alex.